Hey everyone, Vlad back again, and this week I'm pretty excited to show you guys a fun Kickstarter project I received about two months ago. Quite frankly, there hasn't been a day that I haven't used the Shangling Q1 since I got it. It has reinvigorated my love for listening to music with some old proper wired headsets and sure IEMs that I dug out of some old boxes in my storage room. The feeling it's given me has been comparable to when I bought my Technics SL1200 10 years ago and started listening to vinyl with some respectable speakers. With our shift to smartphones and how easy it is to listen to music on them, I'll admit that several years back, I abandoned my old iPod Touch and Creative Zen before that. I still keep my iPod Touch hardwired into my car on the off chance I forget my phone and can still listen to some old tunes in my library. However, I haven't updated that thing in half a decade due to iTunes being such a pain. The Shangling Q1 is dead simple to update via a modern USB interface and a simple drag and drop approach. I find myself putting new music on there every couple of days because it's just a breeze to use and I'm excited to use it more wired up in my car for long road trips on my Babsound upgraded audio system. From what I've been researching getting back into this market and around this price range, there aren't many dApps that look very good. The Shangling Q1 really changes that. What originally drew me to this product was the overall look of it. It really takes some mid-century inspiration and joins it with a very usable interface to create an extremely endearing little product. It's very reminiscent of some old TVs with the lenient corners and the retro scroll wheel on the right side. Even though it may appear like it could be plastic from afar, it's in fact a very durable zinc alloy painted in four very choice colors. As you can see, I went with the forest green color. While it's quite durable, it isn't resistant to scratches, so I was very glad they included a rubber silicone case in the same color. I like that the case covers the micro SD slot to avoid it from accidentally popping out while still giving you access to the USB-C port. And of course, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I was very glad to see a screen protector come with it so that it's now fully protected. It does wash out the screen color a bit and was on the more challenging side of protectors to install, but I'm still glad it was included so the device is safe from scratches in my bag or pocket. The USB, SD, and headphone ports are spread across the bottom, making it very easy to slip into a trouser pocket. In terms of the screen, it's a small 2.7 inches, but it's incredibly easy to use for an all-touch interface. With only some mild hesitations or lags, very rarely, but this is to be expected for an early version of the firmware. There is a bit of color shift off axis, but for viewing album art, it's superb. My only gripe is it could get a little brighter in broad daylight, but please note that the low visibility is a bit exacerbated on camera here. Using the buttons is something you can do with your eyes closed. The left buttons fit easily with your pointer, middle, and index finger. The right attenuator has a pleasing click when rotating and a satisfying press to wake the screen or turn it off. The Q1 is said to have up to 21 hours of usage. I found that will really depend on your playback usage. If you forget the screen on and mix high res and low res music, it'll be less. I got between 15 and 18 hours on average, which is still plenty. I find myself charging it only once every few days. You could easily get a full day of extended play on it. Unlike the overall design, the UI leaves a bit to be desired, but it has improved over recent firmware updates. Navigation buttons in the UI are large enough for my beefy thumbs, and swiping through menus or swiping down for quick commands is simple enough. Speaking of the firmware, it's a breeze to install. Just copy over the bin file from the RAR folder and voila, it'll be done in a couple minutes. Similarly, setting the Q1 up as a DAC on your computer is a breeze, and I love using it for playback when doing some light production work in Ableton Live or in the machine software. The Q1 is pretty next level in terms of wireless capability. Simple Bluetooth playback on a headset or speaker is a breeze. Where it really shines is being able to receive Bluetooth from your phone and use any headset you want. 
which is becoming more useful as most smartphones no longer have a 3.5 millimeter jack. My favorite wireless feature is actually the Shangling Music app, which I had to siloed via an APK, and as of this review, is still only available on Android. I can leave the Q1 plugged into my household audio receiver and can remotely use the app on my phone to control the Q1 or search for the next song. This is an amazing feature that I didn't really expect it to come with, but is a game changer, as I can have music playing throughout the house or on a Bluetooth speaker, but the music won't get interrupted when I get a phone call or accidentally forget to mute Instagram when scrolling through. The only issue I had with it was the remote volume control. Anytime I touched the phone volume to control the Q1, it would play on full blast and I had no control of it besides going back to the device. I'm sure that will get fixed in the app for future firmware iterations. The wireless range is impressive as hell too. I got over 100 feet before I started to get any cutouts as measured with a laser distance tool on my Bose QC35's Mark IIs. The Q1 has a pretty natural sound and a flat signal from end to end. I would say it has a mildly warm sound and that can be altered to sound a bit warmer as well with a digital filter with my favorite being the linear slow one. It's relatively powerful, and I found myself to be plenty satisfied with the mid to high volume range. I'll put a link in the description to another review that goes way more in depth with the sound quality if you're interested. Overall, the Q1 is a lot of player for a small amount of money. I purchased it for $89, but it's available for around $115 to $120 now. I'll link it below for you guys. I really love the design, the simpleness of the UI, and the sound quality. Something tells me I'm gonna have to get a much bigger card soon rather than the 128 gigabyte one I've been using for the past two months.